Welcome back, fellas. So look, man, this mindset has completely shift my life, whether it be financially, whether it be mentally, whether it be physically, whether it be whatever the case may be, this, mi this mindset has completely shifted my life. And I want you to use this video as a way to listen to it while you're taking a walk, listen to it while you're at the gym, listen to it while you're trying to do some type of work. I want to guarantee you while you're listening to this, I'm telling you, this is gonna it's gonna boost your motivation crazy. It's gonna force you to go into action. It's gonna make you where you stop procrastinating on the thing that you truly want to do. It's gonna make it where you completely shift your mindset and the way you are physically, right? Um, and I guarantee that. I, I'm telling you, I guarantee that. And this mindset shift is realizing that every time I say I desire something. I lead it with, it was well, not going to fall into my lap. And I'm telling you, you know what I'm saying? I, I tell you, if you desire him making $100,000 a year, you have to, after that, say, well, it's not going to fall into my lap. If you desire to lose weight, well, it's not going to fall into my lap. If you desire to get this female, well, it's not going to fall into my lap. Nothing has just fallen into your lap, even just the way you got into this video. You got into the video, yeah, it went to your recommended, but you had to click on it. You had to actually have the attention span to watch it. Nothing that comes within your life is just going to fall into your lap. Now, stress, problems, they may come out of nowhere. Yeah. But the good things in life, it doesn't just fall into your lap. So that's one complete mindset shift I've had that has changed my life is realizing that no one's going to save me and shit's not going to fall into my lap. The second one is realizing that I'm accountable for everything. You know what I'm saying? No matter what problem happens with my life, whether an issue whether it's stress, whether it's something I cannot control, is realizing that at the end of the day, if I want to be rich, if I want to have this car, if I want to have this lifestyle, if I want to have all these things, at the end of the day, I am accountable for that. You know what I'm saying? Even if a problem comes into my life. Um, some other mindset shifts is that all you can do is not, the best you can do is not all you can do, right? And it's like, if you try to do some push-ups, and you say, man, and and, the, and all you can do, you say, um, I can only do 20 push-ups. You try to do 20 push-ups, and you, you, you fail that 20, right? And you will start saying, this is all you can do. So therefore, for the rest of the day, you don't want to do no push-ups. You don't want to work out. You don't want to put in the pain. You don't want to put in the time. But what you're failing to realize, and if you have that mindset, is that that was the best you could do at that moment, but that wasn't all you could do for that day. If you rested just for a couple of minutes and tried to do another 25, you realize, damn, all you was able to do was another 50, and you rest again, all you could do is another 25, and all you could do is another 25, and you reach 100 push-ups in a day? Instead of saying, oh, I'm going to do this 25, and that's it, you was able to be like, okay, I'm going to take a rest, I'm going to chill, relax the muscles, I'm going to get right back to it. You were able to do a whole hundred. You know what I'm saying? So that mindset shift is when you realize that it's about long-term volume over intensity in the short term. That's the problem that I had. Um, for that, I had, the, I had the, the habit of going very hard in the beginning with something and being very obsessive with a goal or achieving something or being very obsessive with a task and going very hard in the beginning. But effing it up long term, I guess the way I could give an analogy with that would be, um, you know, simply with just like weight loss. Like one day I'll be, I'll not eat food until like 8 p.m. Be great on the intermittent fasting, um, you know, eat within a calorie deficit, drink mostly water to the day, do 20, 30 down steps, do mad good on one day, right? And I'll feel good about it. I see, I'll, I'll go hop on the scale, see my weight went down type stuff, feel good about it. But then the next day, uh, eat a little bit early or the next day start stress eating and start messing it up. And what, what it truly is, is that this is actually something I learned from, you know, YouTube, shout out my boy, Greg, shout out to GZ. And it, it, he was talking about, it's about your average within your week. You know what I'm saying? It's about your average. You can go really, really good on your calories one day, Monday, Tuesday, but if you effing it on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you just messed up your average and you just messing up all your progress and your work. And I think that that's something that definitely gets in the way with people having consistency and disciplines because, you know, at the end of the day, we all want to see results. 
You know what I'm saying? Like the reason why you get in the gym is so you can see your body results. The reason why you're you're learning you're going to college so you see financial results. The reason why you're talking to this female female so you can see your relationship results. We all want to see results. And I think that um one thing that can definitely knock you off track is messing up your results and messing up your progress. And that's something that I also realized, you know, within myself is that I can lose a whole bunch of weight and I'd be like, okay, I'm on a good momentum, good momentum, good momentum, good momentum. And I just keep going, 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 going. And then once it starts to shift towards when I start gaining weight, then I start sabotaging. I'm like, you know what? I already messed up my progress. I might as well just enjoy this food or enjoy that or eat a little bit more and completely just mess up my progress. So, um, you know, the mindset shift I would say is to definitely celebrate your wins your small wins your big wins look at the results even if it's little results even if it's just losing one pound even if it's just losing half pounds even if they're just making a dollar off of you know what i'm saying your side hustle your business even if it's just making a dollar for youtube that at the end of the day that is a result you know what i'm saying the way you build a house is by brick by brick it's not by saying oh i'm gonna just build this biggest house you know what i'm saying you gotta go brick by brick the way you eat a, a big ass elephant or a big ass steak is bite by bite and you need to uh, appreciate and be grateful for everybody and be appreciated and grateful for every time you lay down a brick. And at the end of the day, if you keep laying down bricks and you keep th taking things bite by bite by bite, eventually you'll see the results that you uh, you truly desire and that you truly want. Uh, what are some other mindset shifts that's completely changed my life? Um, you know, so I do all these videos live. I don't, you know, so I don't write no down. I don't do no editing, no scripting. Uh, what are some other mental, what are some other things that have changed my life and that has completely changed my mindset? Um, I guess one would be realizing that having X amount of money and Y amount of money, I can still have the same lifestyle. You know what I'm saying? This is something that I made about my video about um, changing your relationship with money, right? I had a bad relationship with money. I had a scarcity mindset. I would try to hoard every dollar, uh, save all my bread. I went months and months without spending money on myself. Um, and I never, never went shopping. I can have, bro, I have four, can, can, bro, can have, well, I won't say, can have a good amount of money, right? Um, but it's not even spend a dime on myself. You know what I'm saying? Hey, only spending money on bills or because I have to. And, you know, recently, like maybe like, I'll say what, three, four months ago, you know, I had a, a mindset shift with my relationship with money and having more of an abundance mindset. Been buying myself more clothes. Look at this nigga, look at this polo. This polo is tough. But the thing is, this polo don't even cost that much. This polo is $15. You know what I'm saying? What's, what's, there's nothing wrong with, with, with buying a little $15 t-shirt for you every two weeks. Nothing wrong with buying you some jewelry here and there. You know what I'm saying? There's nothing wrong with uh, copying a watch, copying you some nice stuff. I had a problem with, with buying myself nice things. And you know, what's funny is that truly, truly spending money makes you more, make more money. And I'll tell you why, right? When I, when I was like working a job and then I eventually quit, this was like last year, right? Yeah, when I was working a job and I eventually quit, it was the moment that I had money saved, right? But I felt like, I had nothing to do with it. One, I felt like I still lived the same lifestyle. Two, and three, I felt like it had no purpose because it's like, if I'm not, if, if money is just sitting there, bro, right? And I don't got no crazy ass bills, so it's not like even like an emergency fund, right? That's one. Two, I'm not investing into no business, no crypto, no stocks, no business. And what I realized was that. I realized that I wasn't enjoying my money. I wasn't using my money as a tool. I was not buying myself shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like not buying myself shit. And I wasn't using money as a tool. So therefore, because I had no tool for money, what was the point of me staying at that job? You know what I'm saying? That was back when I was working as a dietary agent, making $10 an hour. I was like, what's the point of me working this job? I'm not using my bread for anything. You know what I'm saying? Um, so therefore it didn't motivate me to keep a job or to want to work a job because it's like, we all get money for a certain reason. 
whether it's to pay for bills, whether it's to buy clothes, whether it's to go buy a new gaming set, whether it's to go spend it on cars, you get money to, 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 to spend it. And um, if you're not enjoying your money, if you're not spending your money, if you're not living, not even, not, not even saying living with abundance, but if you're not enjoying your money, you're not spending your money, there could be a moment where you're just like, well, I'm just going to work to pay bills. And I think that's that's living life very at a miserable way. And something else that I had a mindset shift was realizing that, you know, it's not about being productive all the time. You know, sometimes you have to ask you sometimes you have to ask yourself, why why am I being productive? And you no, know, the answer to why am I being productive it always it most likely will end as you're being productive to get money so you can live a lifestyle of freedom and luxury and, 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 and live a good lifestyle, right? You're getting money so you can buy this. You're working on this so you can have freedom. And you kind of have to think about it. If you're always productive trying to form a lifestyle of freedom, if you never experience the freedom within your, like, I will not explain it, but I'm saying like, sometimes you have to ask yourself, why are you being productive? Are you being productive so you can get this certain type of lifestyle? And I don't know how to explain it, but I'm just saying, like, I just realized it's not about being productive all the time because being productive doesn't mean so it gets you the best results. I can always say this analogy, if a nigga going to the gym five days a week compared to a guy who goes to the gym three days a week, you'd be like the guy who goes to the gym five days a week is working hard, he put in mad pain. But if he's not getting his sleep, if he's not doing rest and recovery, if he's not hitting his protein intake, he's not going to get the same games as a guy that's going to the gym three days a week. So I realized it's not about you know what I'm saying, maximizing input. It's not about overworking yourself. It's not about hustle culture. It's not about going mad hard. It's about focusing on like three things in your life and automating and delegating and, and, and outsourcing. That's also a mindset shift. That's a boss mentality, right? So we're going to talk about now boss mentality, right? So the boss mentality is, is realizing that it doesn't make you soft, pussy, dumb, or anything wrong with making your life easier, right? Uh, you know what I'm saying? Growing up in football, I had the mindset of like, because there's pain, because it's hard, that like, there's a, there's a, there's a weak mind, not weak mindset, but there's a wrong mindset that men have, that they think that because there's more struggle, that means there's more kudo points. Because there's more struggle, that means you'll get farther in life. Because there's more struggle, uh you'll get better results because there's more struggle that means you're that guy and that's not the case and i can say it in you know many ways um so first of all let's talk about automating outsourcing and delegating when it comes to youtube videos right i used to cut up my videos try to make my videos where i cut out the curse words okay i actually trained myself to just not curse so now i don't have to cut out curse words Right before I used to have, I used to start I used to write scripts. I used to write scripts for my videos. So I have to look at the look at the screen, read the script, and stop. So then I have to cut all that. But now I don't do scripts. I just figure out what I'm gonna talk about and I just talk. Right. So I, I outsource now. I outsource editing out curse words and I outsource out of reading scripts. Right. Messing up when I'm talking. You know what I'm saying? Some people feel, you know, odd or weird when they had the little cuts and the little awkward moments and times where they mess up. I just don't care. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to put in a video. I'm not going to edit because editing means I'm going to have to put in time and sit down and edit videos. It's going to slow me down. It's like, bro, it's like how much videos can we get out and get better quality content? And not, not even that. I'm just saying that as in like, how can you make recording videos and posting videos easier and being able to do it at a faster pace and being able to do it quicker? You know what I'm saying? Um, and you can look at as many streamers like Kai Sinat, Bruce Dropamov, all these streamers, they have editors delegated. There's a reason why they're able to post so much videos on their on their stream channel because they are paying someone, let's say, now, this is not actually what they're paying, but let's say you're paying someone $5, and that person you're paying for $5 is making you $10. They just saved you time. Like, I would, I would very much rather make less, a little bit less money and, and, and knock down my profit to give me more time because then I'll be able to make more money because I'll have more focus and attention on bigger and better things. So, uh, yeah, the boss mentality is 
figuring out how you can automate, delegate, and remove as much redundant tasks as possible. Uh, even with YouTube videos, right? Or TikToks, TikTok shorts videos. If you see on my TikToks, I have a whole bunch of captions. Some nigga could be like, damn, this nigga put in a caption on every clip. Like every clip, this nigga just put in a caption, caption, ca but it's like, no, I just do auto captions. And there was a, there was that as a point where I was going, I was thinking about like typing in a caption. I'm like, bro, how, how is these people on TikTok making all these videos? They have all these captions. I come to find out all I gotta do is click one button, boom, auto captions. Now all my shit got captions. So having a boss mentality is figure out how you can automate, delegate, and outsource every redundant task or everything that you do not really like. Um, another mindset shift is is not building a business to give yourself a job. See, when it comes to being like a barber, right? <laughs> when it comes to being like a barber, you can't like, if your barber say, bro, I'm not cutting your hair today. I, I got family. You're going to be like, all right, bro. Can you cut my hair tomorrow? He's going to be like, ah, shit, I, I'm busy. I can't do that. All right, can you come in the next day? When it comes to the barber, you're not going to just cheat on your barber like that. You can't cheat on your barber easily like that. But when it comes to like a software, when it comes to like a service, when it comes to only all of these different things, you can go to different avenues and aspects. But when it comes to like a barber, that is someone that you need to have a personal relationship with. You need to develop it with someone. And you can't outsource being a barber. You can't just hire someone to cut hair for $5 and, and you take $10 out of that. You can't. So having the boss mentality also is, 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 is figuring out how can you have businesses? How can you have your stuff set up in a way where a lot of the tasks are outsourced, are paid for? How can you have a business where you can sell it? How can you have a business where uh, you can have people you pay for that do the task for you and you can just sit and chill? Because people go, look, people for, for, the, for the main reason you start a business to have freedom. And um, if you start a business to have freedom, but I'll say this. When you start a business, you do it to have freedom. But sometimes people start a business they, 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 they hate the 9 to 5, they hate working 40 hours a week, and then they turn around and start working 24-7. You know what I'm saying? So, but I get it. Obviously, in the beginning part, you're going to be having to be everything. You know what I'm saying? When you start a business in the beginning, you're going to have to be the marketer. You're going to have to be the sales. You're going to have to be the operations. You're going to have to be the graphics designer. You're going to have to be all of these things. And I always say this, even within, if you're being a rapper or you're into something that's artistic, you are a marketer before you're a rapper. You are a marketer before you're a YouTuber. You're a marketer before you're a comedian because you can have the best jokes, the best videos, the best music. If no one knows who you are, if no one's seeing your stuff, if you're not getting the right audience, then you ain't gonna make no cheese. And if you ain't making no cheese for a good minute, you're gonna be like, F this. You know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, those, those, those are some of the mindset shifts I had. Is, um, and honestly, it's it, I think that Sometimes it's simply just knowing what you want is going to give you clarity too. I think that once you truly realize, okay, this is what I want, everything becomes so much clearer. I think that I, I would recommend everyone to have some time to just journal, ask yourself some shadow work questions, ask yourself some introspection, do some introspection, and genuinely figure out what you want in life and uh, figure out how to get it and work the ways to it. Uh, keep the head down, surround yourself with uh, people that are trying to get to the same goal, surround yourself with people that have that goal, that, that have the results that you want. And um, in a couple of years, a couple of months, a couple of weeks, whatever the case may be, you will start to see dividends. You will start to see results of doing that. And, um, you know, those, those are all the mindset shifts that I've had uh, that have changed my life. Uh, what are some other ones? I'll say those are the, like the biggest ones that that's, that's completely changed my life. I'll say one last one is let's get this chicken bag. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Stephens Cole. Uh, this one video, he's like, man, let's get this chicken bag, man. And sometimes, whatever, I'm, I'm, I'm drifting off my focus, drifting off my attention. I'm like, you know what? Let's get this chicken bag. But I'll, I'll say another, uh, another mindset that changed my life is that um, is honestly just Honestly, just 
continuously to reinvent yourself. You know, I'm big on reinventing yourself. I'm big on reinventing your image. I'm big on reinventing um, your career. I'm, I'm big on reinventing just your environment. You know what I'm saying? Um, reinventing yourself isn't just a, yourself also. It can be the standards that you hold to other people. It can be the standards you hold within a relationship. It can be the standards that you hold for the female you date. Um, I'm big on reinventing yourself. You know what I'm saying? Clean your room. Make sure your room nice and clean. Make sure your room smell good. Make sure you smell good. Make sure your image right, your body right, your mind right, your your money right, your credit right, your bathroom look clean. Your, yeah, 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 yeah. Make sure your your um, just, just just little shit. Make sure your car clean. Just you know, completely just reinvented everything. You know what I'm saying? And increasing standards. That's something that has completely changed my life too. Is increasing your standard. I think that. You know, Brandon Carter says this amazing quote, you, you do not rise to your goals, you fall to your standards. And, you know, I have an analogy for that, but I don't feel like saying another analogy. <laughs> I, I, I'll say the analogy, right? If there's a kid that just wants to do good enough to get his degree, if you say you have to you, you have to get a 65 to just get a degree, he don't work hard enough to get a 65. But if you told him, you know what, you have to get a 75 for all your classes in order to get a degree, I bet you he'll start working harder to get that degree. And it shows that you will fall to your standards and um, start making standards. Start writing down your income standard and your income standard can be based on what type of car you want, where you want to live, figure out how much it costs to have the car, the insurance, all these things that you want and you desire, figure out how much it costs and then figure out how much money you will be needing to order to live a lifestyle that you want, whether it be, you know, living life in abundance, we're not stressing about money whether it be you can save this amount of money every month, figure out how much money you need to be making and make that your standard. Your standard could be 60 grand a year. Your standard could be 70 grand a year. Your standard could be 100 grand a year. Your standard could be 150 grand a year. And what's cool about setting standards that you're not hitting is that you can have a reality check. Like, bro, I'm not hitting my standard. I, there's work that needs to be done. I need to work harder. I'm not hitting my standard of hitting uh, making $100,000 a year. I'm not hitting my standard of making $110,000 a year. I'm not hitting my standard of having this certain type of body fat percentage. I'm not hitting my standard of living life at a luxury. I'm not hitting my standard of having my image like this. I'm not hitting my standard of having a network and a conglomerate of you know like-minded men that's on this, 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 and that. What's cool about having standards instead of goals is that you can realize, bro, I'm not having this shit right now. I got to do work to get that. So that's all the mindset shit that's completely changed my life. If you don't know I am, my name is V-Dunk. I have a community. I like my many women also is basically physically, financially, and spiritually. If you want to do that, you just take a card and jump aboard. Use a wise kids, your pre-run kid ticket. Oh yeah, I the video and then I'm out.